Um, and that was all on price there. So I took it home and started doing some steam testing on the stove because I wanted to see if there was a difference between the steam and just air pressure. Um, I have the valves set when I tested both the steam and air pressure set up for steam. So the valves closed earlier and then allow the expansion of the steam to do more work. Um, this was my first test on the stove after I got everything unseized up. I basically started out um, started out, let it warm up, you know, spun the blade every few seconds and went to town. And then turned the video on as soon as it started to actually move on its own. Um, right here, it's running at about 36 RPM. And then it'll get, and then it's slowly building up. This is with the, with this valve completely open the whole time. So just no pressure build up whatsoever, just letting it go. Um, and it starts building up speed, as you can see, and it gets up to about 80 RPM. And then I have the stove on about five or six, so about half, maybe a little more. And it ended up leveling off at around 105 RPM. And it sounds pretty good with the steam running through it, too. Um, there are a few minor leaks due to all the tweaking I've had to do to it um, here. And I'm not taking it apart because it's epoxy together, and it's just a hassle. And the next slide, um, I decided to test it out by letting the pressure build up. So I let the pressure build up to save this uh, safe pressure about 8, 9 psi. Uh, again, I had done uh, testing on it prior, and I tested the tank out up to 15 psi and found out that it bowed the bottom of the pressure or the um, boiler quite well. So it, it rocks now. <laughs> and it was really, really rocking. Um, to solve this, I ended up putting a huge dent in the bottom of it to try to relieve um, some of the stress and put some of the stress in the bottom of the stainless steel to try to hold it tight and level. Um, so I got the pressure up to 10 psi and then let it crack. Um, this is all done on a home stove. It's just, I uh, uh, can't remember the wattage of the range. We can see it's creeping up on there in 10, and it is surprisingly hot. I adjusted all the valves off of a bite pump, so I didn't have to deal with all of the heat, because it would have been impossible to get everything properly adjusted. So you see here, I finally get it all the way open, and it does wobble a little bit, even though it's on little stilts. And it kicks up um, in probably 20 seconds to 220 RPM. And it just it flies. And it's actually not vibrating as bad as it did on the press there. Probably because I was messing with it more on the press there. And it has a bunch of water in the bottom now. Um, I filled it up approximately halfway for this test. <clears throat> anyway, it started out at 220 RPM and then it slowly drops down. Um, it's probably running at 190 right now. Yeah, 190. And then it, it drops down to 170. Um, kind of levels off at 150 and then really sets in and starts to operate um, the operating speed at the stove at about 6 or 7 is 120 RPM. So in conclusion, um, it's really simple design and nothing fancy, no fancy valves. These are, the valves probably should be the longest design and I want it just as simple as possible. Um, few moving parts, really easy. Um, it operates on only water and heat, so basically no cost once it's assembled, which is brilliant as far as I'm concerned. Um, it came 76% under budget. I originally estimated 400 and it came out to, what, 144 altogether. Um, I tried to design everything for a fan speed of 160 RPMs and then ended up uh, with the cabin speed, is probably with the cabin stove and the distance from the top of the stove to the fireplace, and just, um, I don't know, I guess, judging the temperature on my own, it's probably going to run about 80 to 100 RPM, unless the stove is really cooking. Um, and it's under two and a half feet wide and um, two feet long. And it actually does circulate the air quite, there's a, a decent current behind it. 
Um, and to thank, I have the professors, uh, both Beardsley and Crinkle, and Matt Burby also was an incremental part. Um, CWU and Twin CPU were really graceful in providing me a lot of materials, and I had a lot of help from students just figuring stuff out and tinkering with it. And friends and family, I don't know if I'll, s I barely kept a girlfriend through this project. <laughs> And come and help me, that's doing it alone. But it's pretty fun. Everybody talk to you, it's pretty impressed. Um, any questions? <laughs>